Hi, I'm Vicky, the Nature and Wellbeing Officer for Kent Wildlife Trust. Today we've come to all marshes to practice some mindful bird watching. This reserve is a great place to do this because it combines coastal habitat with salt marsh. This is great for birds. Bird watching is a great way to integrate mindfulness into your lives, especially if you find mindfulness and meditation quite difficult or aren't used to doing it. There's lots of evidence out there to support mindful bird watching being great for our well-being. It's a technique that I've used for years that's been very effective in helping me support and maintain my own mental health and well-being. A good book to read to show how it supported others is Bird Therapy by Joe Harkness and The Natural Health Service by Isabel Hardman. There's a common misconception that you must have lots of expensive gear to be able to birdwatch effectively. This isn't true. I have a scope as birdwatching is one of my main hobbies, but it's not a necessity. You can pick up a pair of decent binoculars and a bird guide for relatively cheap, but the most important equipment you need for mindful birdwatching is your senses. We're going to start with a quick listening exercise. While scanning across, just listen to the natural sounds you can hear and pay particular attention to the different types of bird noises. Find this a helpful exercise to ease you into mindful bird watching as it opens the senses up and relaxes you. You can now begin to take notice of what's around you, what the birds are doing, what behaviours they're exhibiting and anything else that you can see. For example, these shell duck are sifting as they're feeding on the sand, as is this black-headed gull. You can begin to notice the way he moves and how his feet sink into the sand as he walks across the mud flats. Part of mindful bird watching is being able to go to some really amazing places. So we're going to do a breathing exercise as we take in the views. I want you to breathe in for three seconds, hold that breath for two seconds and then exhale for four. As you breathe in, that breath needs to go past your chest and all the way down into your stomach. And when you exhale, it's as though you're blowing on a candle enough for it to flicker, but not enough to blow it out. I'll let you practice as we look at the view down the estuary. Now gently ease yourself out of the meditation. Seldom do I find that I can sit still in one place with my thoughts, but bird watching gives me the perfect opportunity to do that. There's a purpose to sitting still and being in the present moment. Focusing on the birds around me and the environment I'm in allows me to calm my mind and be in the present moment. Bird hides are a great place to do this as you can find stillness and peace inside while she watched the world unfold through the window. They're also a great place to be able to tune into any more bird song that you can hear. I could focus my mind on the song of this reed warbler. I then picked up on a linnet singing and set my mind to finding him perched on the brambles. Eventually I found him sat on the top of this bramble bush, singing his heart out. 
find a lot of my time spent looking up when I'm bird watching too, as there can be a whole world in the skies above us. Here I spotted this kestrel soaring. Notice the speckled plumage on the chest and the light shining through the primary feathers. Most people are put off by going bird watching because they feel they wouldn't be able to ID the birds. But mindful bird watching is about much more than just being able to ID what you see. It's about being in the present moment, in the environment that you're in, and taking notice of what the wildlife is around you. However, a lot of popular bird watching spots do have ID boards to help you. This could be a really good learning opportunity, but without the pressure of having to know it all at once. It took me many years of looking through this bird guide to be able to build my bird ID skills up. Looking through the bird guide helps me pick out feather patterns and markings that I might have missed in the field. This helps me know what I need to look for when I do go out bird watching. When I know I see this oily iridescent feather of patterns on this bird and the tuft on the head, I know that I'm looking at a lapwing. But knowing what you're looking at in terms of species isn't really all that important when it comes to being mindful. It all comes back to being in the moment again sitting peacefully with your own thoughts whilst watching the world around you. Some people can find sitting with their thoughts quite unsettling and distressing, but that's the beauty of mindful bird watching, is that your brain has something to focus on whilst you're doing this and it eases you in. At times when I've found it difficult to sit with my own silence, bird watching has been my therapy, going to a nature reserve, sitting in a peaceful spot and looking through the eye of my scope. A quote by Joe Harkness on bird therapy sums this up for me. When you look through the binoculars or a scope, you are cocooned in those barrels or in that tube and the entire focus of your mind or vision goes on that. It's the ultimate focus meditation. You could be anywhere looking at a woodlark and nothing else matters at that particular moment because everything else is blocked out. You have a go with the next clip. Remember, if you become distracted, don't worry, just bring your focus back to watching the bird behaviour and any of the sounds that you can hear. Bird watching is usually viewed as a solitary activity, and it can be if you want it to be. But I've actually found that bird watching is one of my more social hobbies. There are usually plenty of other people reaping the same benefits that you are of being in the great outdoors and being in touch with nature. Isabel Hardman wrote in her book, The Natural Health Service, of when she first started bird watching. She said that when she became ill, she used to cancel seeing friends and family and used to seclude herself. She says a bird hide feels like a good halfway house. You can get outside and be in your own company, but you'll find yourself being slowly reminded of the joys of other people, as they help you find the bittern and you help them find the snipe. Sharing wildlife experiences with others is a great way of bringing connection into your life. Some of my happiest moments have been sat in a hide with a friend as we found that rare bird that we've been looking for. I hope you found something that you can take away from this video that you'll find useful in the future. And perhaps you could try incorporating mindful bird watching into your next trip out to the great outdoors.